All right, so here we are. We're going to discuss less manly, uh, lost in L.A. All right, the scene opens up. We're uh, in a Hollywood scene here, uh, somewhere in Los Angeles, or sorry, somewhere in Hollywood, uh, where it talks about the Santa Ana winds. And uh, it's setting up a vibe that with the music, there's something mysterious going on here. And it talks about how the streets are cold and deserted, which is odd because if it's a Santa Ana, it's usually not cold. It's usually actually quite the opposite. But anyway, the streets are cold and deserted. And there has been uh, some, some people missing, namely uh, Hollywood stars. And so we start off at the mansion of Bean, who, if you don't remember, was in the first Less Manly game. He was a little miniature guy. And uh, so there are two versions of this video, and there'll probably be two versions of the commentary. It's, it's going to be exactly the same. The only thing that is different is in the censored version, in case YouTube restrictions caught what it might consider nudity. I made two versions, one, and it's literally only here really at the beginning where it blocks some of her scenes. Um, but this is the first time, you know, the first Less Manly game is kind of very, uh, it's very much like the old school Sierra and this one has, it's not really live action, but it's like the, um, they used, in some of these scenes clearly they used a real person as a model. So like this is one of the scenes that gets censored in case YouTube picked up on, you know, hey, I see her rear end, or I potentially, if I zoom in really, really, really close, I might see a side boob. So I made two versions in case YouTube struck down one, I would still have the censored version to stay up. Anyway, so Bean basically gives Les a call and says, hey, why don't you come swing by the, uh, the mansion? And, uh, you know, Les is like, hey, is there anything that you're worried about with, you know, all the disappearances? And he's like, no, nah, I got a security system and some dogs and stuff like that. And, uh, oh, I should point out, naturally, this is not a Sierra game. As you can tell with the tile brand on the left, it says let's play Accolade games. So this is not a Sierra game. The reason I'm playing it is very similar to Sierra. So for my channel, if I just stuck with Sierra games, eventually I'd run out of material. Uh, and that would be it, right? So if there are games that are similar to Sierra's style of games, like these kind of adventure games, I will play them for the channel and uh, talk about them. So I've done like Legend of Crondia, uh, obviously Less Manly. I've done Blue Force, which is actually done by Jim Walls, who made Police Quest. So there are a few non-Sierra games on my channel, in case you're wondering, hey, this is a Let's Play Sierra Games channel, and this is not a Sierra game. That is why, in case this is the first video you are ever seeing on my channel. Uh, this is another part that uh, I put sensors on. If you're, if you happen to be watching the sensor version, you'll see Les Manley's head covering uh, what could potentially be considered nudity. Um, you don't actually see anything, but you know, just in case. And so Les gets the paper, and it looks like Bean and his girlfriend have disappeared. So we have the official intro of Les Manley lost in L.A. See, it was made in 1991, right when adventure games were uh, doing pretty well. Now, this game is very different than the first one. Um, I feel like the puzzles, for the most part, were easier in this one than in the first one. The first one, there's a lot of far-fetched things that you had to do. So as always, you kind of like check out what you already have for inventory, see uh, what can be used. like we can go and talk to these ladies and again see looks more realistic versus just the uh, um, digital art I guess I don't know how to explain it I like that the uh, girl on the left just stays at that pose of holding her arm out and the girl on the right is just flexing the entire time I do think it's pretty funny that uh, you can tell the game is obviously dated, right? It's 1991, but the uh, 
the dialogue with these two is purposely um, very Valley Girl-like. So, like, everything they say is, like, totally, like, something else. Like, really? Like, for sure. That type of dialogue. Which, you know, seems cliche, but having grown up in SoCal, I can promise you, uh, not only did those girls exist, those guys existed as well. So people would say, oh, you know, that's hella cool. And stuff like that. Matter of fact, I... <laughs> I probably say the word like way more often in general conversation than I probably should. So a lot of times I'll say like, see, for example, I shouldn't say like, uh, for example, I would say, hey, you know, like, uh, we totally were going to go up there and like check it out, but like there was a lot of people up there, so we just left. And that is literally how I will sometimes talk. <laughs> Grew up in SoCal way too long. So we got a little bit of information from these girls about how we need to kind of prove that we know Bean, because right now they don't believe it. I do like that the guy at the surf shop just seems to be checking out the two girls. Every time I see <laughs> I wonder if people even know what Hacky Sack is these days. Every time I see that guy playing Hacky Sack, if you have never played a game called California Games, which I think was also by Accolade, actually, now that I think about it, um, every time I see that guy with a Hacky Sack, I think of that game. Uh, the game California Games is pretty fun. It's got like a bunch of like surfing competition, Hacky Sack competition, and stuff like that, but that... That's gotta be it. I think it's got it. California Games has to be by Accolade. If I'm wrong, feel free to tell me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure because that looks very, very, very similar. So right that so right there we learned about that there is a an eclipse coming. So that'll be relevant when we speak with someone else. And by the way, if this is your first time here, please feel free to click that like and subscribe button. Uh, my end goal is to try to reach a thousand subscribers so that I can monetize the channel. I don't expect to get much out of it, um, but currently uh, in my household I am the only one able to work. My wife had a medical issue back in 2020 and she's no longer able to work, she's on disability. And uh, if you've ever tried to get a disability check, you know that it takes uh, a lot of effort. Um, here we are, four years later, trying to get that disability check, and we have to keep proving it over and over and over. We got lawyers involved, all this other stuff, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so I'm the only breadwinner here at the house, so um, I'd love to eventually get to a thousand subscribers and try to monetize the channel. Um, even if it makes pennies, uh, you know, that's something that's, you know, gas in the tank. Well, these days it's not gas in the tank, gas is ridiculously expensive. Uh, but you get the idea. Anything helps. So if you would be so kind as to <laughs> click that like and subscribe, that'd be awesome. So that was some fun dialogue with the woman where she talks about she's into the California cult. She doesn't eat red meat anymore. And then <laughs> Les goes over there and tells her that she's going to get wrinkles in the sun. This is the uh, the bodyguard who clearly also has very. Let's see, you can see how he uses the word like and dude a lot. Uh, look around, dude. It's Saturday and the beach is practically empty. Everyone's wigged out. So very, very, uh, <laughs> very 80s uh, dialogue. Uh, even though this game is made in the 90s, but this is very 80s. And see, LA is like you know. <laughs> I love these little quips where he says, surely you developed a theory, and the guy's like, a theory, and then Les actually basically word for word explains what an actual theory is. And then he, the guy makes an effort to try to deduce a theory of his own, and fails. So now he mentions that Helmet put a bunch of people out of work, and uh, they use Helmet as a stunt double. And so that put a bunch of stunt dudes out of work. This 
so his acknowledge and move on the, I can't remember where it's from is it Wayne's World? where there's a thing where they say accept and carry on so I think that's what that's a reference to So now we got a clue that we should head for the pit. And tell them that Lance sent you. So we're able to go over here and tell them that we know Lance. And once we know that, they open up and give some more information been working out with him for about a year. And that there was someone by the name of Maladonna, I think is how it's pronounced. And, but they fought a lot. So it didn't last long. So we're getting little clues here. or it's one of their friends. And now we know Maladonna is not such a good person. A uh, person that Bean had been dating or working with previously. So we ask about Maladonna and they said, hey, might be shooting a new video at Paramount Studios. Or Paramount, sorry. Paramount's studio. Now we know the police name is Rock, and he's over like on Hollywood Boulevard. So like, we'll be on our way like pretty soon to figure out like what is going on. Like really. sidewalk I have no idea what she's doing so we notice that Lance has a bandana and shades that we can specifically talk about which probably means we need to acquire at least one or both of those So we find out the eclipse is happening right about now. <laughs> Do you love these stuff? Uh, they're just changing the light bulb bands. Alright, so it seems like we're done speaking with Lance. Dude. You know, if it is Accolade Games, I'm going to be severely disappointed if they're the ones who made, uh, sorry, uh, California Games, uh, and there was no surfer over there on the beach because that was one of the games on the uh, California Games game. So it's super confusing when I say it like that. Now, one of the things I would say, I like that there is this map, uh, but moving across this map was odd because. You try to click somewhere and it wouldn't go there because you're not exactly clicking on the right spot. So I wish that map would have been more clear as to where to click to move to that area. In this position, uh, if you watch Big Bang Theory, to me this girl with how she looks in the face, she looks like Penny from Big Bang Theory. Randomly. When, I, when it got to this part I was like, oh, she looks like Penny. <laughs> So 
So he talks about uh, this evil guy, about how he's going to add her to the collection. So we know we can go to Paramount Studio to see if we can get to the video. We can also try to go to Sunset Boulevard to see if we can talk to the cop. And see, this is what I mean. So it looks like, you know, you put the feed icon, but then he just walks around it. He doesn't actually go to the location. So he just kind of walks around the map. So it's unclear sometimes where exactly to click. And so when we arrive to the Paramount Studios front gate, this gentleman basically asks us if we have an invitation. We don't, we don't have a clear excuse yet. Uh, so I believe we end up having to go back. I would say this part is a little bit, uh, in terms of uh, game, it's a little frustrating because it always kicks you out after the dialogue where he just says run along and then it puts you back onto the map versus just letting you continue to talk. Now I get it, if you were to continue, if you were to say I need to talk to Maladonna and he says no and then you say I need to talk to Goldstein and he says no, eventually he's going to realize that you just keep asking different questions so I get that they kick you out to come back as if you left and came back but uh, Game-wise, it's a little bit frustrating. And on this part, so sometimes it's not very clear that you can move up or down from a map. So there was, I think, it's not here, it's a little bit later where I didn't realize I could keep walking, whatever you want to call that, southeast to the right and stuff like that. Um, so there are times where I got stuck like that because I didn't realize you could move around. Usually I just thought if you went to an area that's pretty much like the city street was it. So we got some bird poop that we can't just pry off with our fingers. use the credit card that we started with to scrape poop off the window. It's very similar to Heart of China where uh, you have to collect bird poop. So that's me frantically clicking around and not being able to do too much. So now we're on Hollywood Boulevard. Thousands flock here, um, hoping to have their dreams come true. So there's the Hollywood Wax Museum. A cop is watching a kid uh, spray paint. I assume is a reference to Terminator 3. I have to verify what year Terminator 3 came out versus this game coming out in 1991. I do like the reference to the poster Far Upper Left uh, Part 10. Clearly a reference to Friday the 13th with the hockey mask and the bloody axe. Now we got an officer over here. Pretty good chance that it is Officer Rock. Now we talk about how the LAPD has a database, so now 
now we just need to figure out how can we get some information out of that LAPD database? Well, we'd call Sonny Bonds and, uh, sorry, police quest joke. Uh, I'll see my way out now. So now we know that there might be a back door to the LAPD database, which seems like a scary breach for an officer to know that and not to report it. And so Les is trying to figure out how he can perhaps get into that and uh, hack his way in. And there it is, a reference to Terminator 3, because it mentions Arnold. I do love this dialogue of, are you someone? He's like, well, sort of. And then there's, are you this? No. 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 <laughs> that was pretty good. And they actually call out like King's Quest and Monkey Island. other games. Loom. says I'm uh, from Les Manly Search for the King and they're like, yeah, I don't recognize it. And so when you tell them that, you know, you're not interested in becoming famous, you're just looking for your friend Helmet Bean, they freak out and they're like, oh my god, he's like so popular, can we get your autograph? And so change of conversation despite all those no's of him answering if he's a movie star, TV star, radio person. And then they offer a map uh, for the autograph. I like that they combined basically uh, Friday the 13th and Halloween. Jason Myers, because Friday the 13th, it's uh, Jason Voorhees, and then for Halloween, it's Michael Myers. <laughs> I do like that. When you click on look closely, yeah, that's what we did too. So she talks about that. She thinks it's Abe Goldstein and like there's a extortion kind of thing happening. But clearly all her allegations that it might be him seem way off based off of, you know, she did a reading on him and his past lives were like all these horrible things and stuff like that. <laughs> So now we want to take a picture, but we can't because it's out of film. So now we need to figure out what to do next. So 
right now we're heading for the Loose Pawn Emporium, and we got like a got a rap group up here called the Boys. So we got one guy named Ice, one guy named T, one guy named M, the other guy named C. So we got M C Ice T kind of. <sighs> So they won't let us into the pawn shop unless we prove something to them. And it's impressive that if you look at the upper right where it says the sign switches between don't walk and walk and then the other sign to the left will be opposite. So when that turns to don't walk in the upper right over to the left it says walk and the light turns green. That is really cool amount of uh, attention to detail to do that because they could have left that totally static as walk and don't walk or whatever but the fact that they actually change it so when it goes to walk over to the left it'll eventually start flashing go to a yellow light then it'll go to a red light and then the other side turns to walk that's a like I said pretty cool attention to detail So now by choosing that we're kind of looking for the beanster, he's like, oh look, they're talking our dialect, and now we have to rap. And so now they've wrapped a few lines, and now we get to pick the next line. Now they're saying they saw a big white limousine during the abduction. So now we know that Lou is looking for a photo of LaFonda because her disappearance has created a demand for her photo. Because now that they suspect they'll never see her again, well then that means her photo must be worth more. So now we know we can probably see if we can get this picture thing with the other girl who uh, is anti-whaling and uh, all that stuff. The previous girl that we were just talking to. The other issue I had with traveling sometimes getting off of a screen you wouldn't know where to click to be able to get back to the map so it would be nice if you could just click the map and click it on you and then it just opens the map and so here we are back to the uh, map that isn't so easy to use. This is what I mean, just walking around. It's... This map could have been better for sure. I mean, overall, this game is uh, its an improvement over the first one in many ways. Everything from the puzzles and obviously the graphics. <laughs> so, I mean, it is an improvement. Uh, but for sure there are still little tweaks that they could have done to make it a uh, more concise kind of game. So the Wax Museum is all sealed up. But it's probably here for a reason. Just like every other game, usually it's there for a reason. name is Sleezoid. If you are a fan of the Uncanny X-Men comics, uh, you may 
I mean, the word Sleazoid it pre-existed before X-Men, but that's re that's where I first heard the word X-Men. So if you're a fan of the X-Men, uh, I'm just trying to get to the point that when I saw the name Sleazoid, the first thing I thought of was the alien race known as the Brood, which the X-Men often called uh, Sleazoids. So there's probably a good chance that we're going to have to end up in there. Now we got a guy that's named Blade. Blade appears to be waiting for some kind of call or a contact, and he needs a phone. And so he talks about he might have gotten into trouble by breaching into uh, computer stuff, which, as we know, um, the LAPD guy Rock said that uh, unless we can hack into that um, LAPD database, we're not going to get much from the cops. Uh, whoever they got from Murray, uh, they did a good job, especially uh, with his shirt and pants as dingy as they are. Really helps uh, give a feel to how this hotel is. Uh, motel, hotel, motel is run. <laughs> Random dig at William Shatner. <laughs> I don't know, I imagine there's still a thing, but like the 1900 and the 976 numbers uh, back in the late 80s and 90s for all those sex lines. I imagine with the uh, the ease in which uh, pornography uh, can be found on the internet, I wonder if those things are even in existence anymore. So this guy knows Blade, who's across the street, the guy who can hack. And looks like his real name was Peace Child before. He's like one of the brightest kids when he was growing up, and he just took a wrong turn in life. So now that we know a little bit more, we can come up here and ask him, uh, since his name is Peace Child. So he asks us if we're ever going to mention it, and we're going to go with no. He talks about that he used to be in the security business. And so once again, the implication of a white limo is mentioned. And he says a hot babe would offer him some cash. And that there was perfume, and it's Maladonna's own brand. And clearly Blade is not a fan of the boys. He talks about how they live up in the hills in the nice area, until, and they came down here as posers until he ran them off.
So he has a pass for that club that uh, is right across the street. In order to get there, he wants a favor. And he found some film upstairs last couple times. Someone must have forgotten it, and he wants it developed. He would do it himself, but he's stuck behind the counter. And Les asks, you know, hey, is that, like, okay to do? It seems very unethical. Uh, but clearly this guy does not care about that kind of uh, ethical behavior. So now we have the film as well as the pass. If you recall, the photo place was complaining about needing film. So we give her the film, and we're going to see if this works. So we have a couple of options of whose photo we can use, but let's use La Fonda because we know that one is under demand. So Les stands in front of that painted prompt. And they snap a, another Kodak moment. So now Les has a photo of uh, the missing woman that was with our good buddy Bean. I'm not sure what the reference to the canine is, because there are several famous canines in Hollywood. Uh, like Lassie and stuff like that, but that doesn't look like a collie, so... I'm not sure who the... Canine is supposed to be a reference to. So if you happen to know or you have an idea, if it's not Lassie, uh, let me know in the comments because most people don't even know who Lassie is anymore. Alright, so even though we talked to Blade and he mentioned the boys about running them out, um, We don't have a lot to do, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to show some colors and use the information. And this is one of those weird clues, right? Like the fact that the bandana is what triggers conversation about how they live up in the hills. You would think just the information that Blade gave us to come back and say, hey, I know you're just a bunch of rich kids who live up in the hills and you're a bunch of posers. But apparently not. You have to use the bandana, which is, I'm assuming, supposed to be like the whole colors thing. So we figure out that someone was talking about it prior to Helmet actually disappearing. <laughs> I like that they're talking about possibly an abduction and then the stuff that they bought is literally stuff that you would use to break into someone's house and abduct them. Like wire cutters and <laughs> tape. So this guy is a huge fan of La Fonda and also a pawn shop. <laughs> so clearly super attracted to La Fonda. 
So we see he's got a computer in the back. So he has a laptop, but it doesn't work. So as you can see, ever since she vanished, her photos have become a collector's item. And then after we get the computer, he's headed for Club Mud. And it's a bummer, it doesn't even say like, if it's if it is broken, it doesn't even say what's wrong with it. So we don't know what we have to fix. Again, the quirky map. She's putting on her makeup, looking in the reflection of the window. No, it's it's weird because his hand is next to his face. Uh, it gives the impression he's on a phone, but I don't think in 1991 they had small phones like that yet, so he would not have been on a phone, or even a Bluetooth thing, so it's his hand positioned next to his face. It's unclear why it's like that, um, unless I'm missing something, so if you know why his hand is next to his face like that, uh, let me know in the comments, because it's, don't think it's a cell phone, because uh, it's 1991, uh, probably not a nearbud. The way the guy that opens his jacket, if you've played Leisure Suit Larry 1, right outside the uh, the quickie wed. That's what that reminded me of, because the guy flashes. But obviously this guy is selling wares. So he talks about the recession and this being slow and not a good corner. says he's new to the area. So maybe giving him a map that might help him say, hey, you know, here's where you can go. So there you go. Now he says he can find a better location. So now we got a phone and we know that Blade needs a phone, so we'll be visiting Blade soon. Save the game, it was saved as moving around is a pain in the uh, rump. So we head back to Blade, offer him the phone, because now I can get that call, and then we point out the no one knows your number. So we, in turn, ask for him getting data into the uh, LAPD. And I love that they break the fourth wall. And he's like, hey, in this game... So it's E-L something, but he is pronouncing it as L something. And Les says he'll take it from there.
It's interesting, he asks us to develop the photos, and even though we came back, he doesn't ask what the status of uh, the film is. So I was confused because the pass is for that, but then it says the pass can only be used at the proper place. But, once again, because this place is confusing, that's not actually where it's at. Even though that place is an adult place, this is where the pass is actually used. Again, the 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 way this game is mapped it's weird like you can go down one street and it'll lead you to a map go down another street but then it actually goes somewhere later the next morning so we don't get to see what happens Les just wakes up next to two very beautiful women We're in Murray's Hotel. So, apparently nothing may have happened, just a lot of uh, computer talk, apparently, which is what really gets these girls going. Who wouldn't you? flashback to what actually happened. Have you ever been to a mud wrestling event? Maybe not partook, but have you ever been to one? If you have, uh, let me know in the comments what it's like. Never been to one. Is it as dirty as it sounds. Get it? Because it's mud. That's right, folks. That's, that's the dad jokes we're getting in here today. physically dirty at all. I mean, the moves look dirty, but uh, no one is actually physically dirty. And clearly, the mud wrestling scene is for one thing, and it is to get the gratuitous shots of these beautiful women, <laughs> as Les just leads her and takes it. If you want to see the flashback again, you have to load a previously saved game. As I imagine most people may have back then. I do like how they have his eyes going from left to right looking at them, but also looking down at their uh, assets. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she happens to have a copy of a floppy disk. And uh, that's what Les needs, apparently, uh, to boot this baby up. So we knew, having read that it said EL, that the password started with EL, and it listed passwords that started with L, so obviously L was. I like that Elvis sightings are a priority. <laughs> Two sets of footprints at the Bean Mansion. The duct tape, the wire fence cutters.
So a lot of it is pointing towards Maladonna, who has access to the money, the perfume, the long hair, history of insane jealousy, mentions the perfume, to, seen uh, with two dance partners, always travels in a white limo. So it looks like Maladonna is our prime suspect. But what about Goldstein? Could it also be Goldstein? Because there was the whole uh, money issue there. He's a ruthless, uh, destroys rivals, feuding with stars over contracts. So it could be. So, so far we are pretty much done with this general area. But that wax museum, probably going to come up again. So now that we have that information, now we're able to talk to this guy. When he says, no one gets in without a reason, we now have a reason. video so we need another way in. Look at it, it says the poo is very strong on them. So we're gonna put the poo in the boat to basically cover the hole. And you notice after you use the poo it says it looks ship shape and then we row <laughs> we row out to this cabin where there's a sign that says Camp Blood. And it has the uh, red moon so you can tell it's very, uh, very Friday the 13th, and probably, or what do they call it, October 31st, part 10. from October 31st, part 10, appears. <laughs> A reference to Freddy Scarier, that is. A reference to Nightmare on Elm Street. gets less cut in half. Or does it? It 
it's just special effects, less is okay. So now we have ourselves an axe from Jason Myers from October 31st, part 10. So we saw the guy say cut from this area and uh, we'll just go ahead and walk out if we can. And this is Melodonna's video with her two stage dancers who look exactly alike. They appear to be twins. <laughs> reference to Madonna, if that wasn't super clear. And there goes Les swinging by on a chain. Very leisure suit Larry too. And Larry's in the jungle and swings on the vines. I like that the two front dancers are still dancing, but Melodonna's stuck in a pose. You'd think that she would put her foot down and not be in a position where her leg is just staying in the air. And so because Les swing in there, looks like someone believes he's the next video star. Which now makes him hot, so now that makes him more desirable for agents as well as potentially Goldstein. So there we go. It even mentions there that Les can now find an agent who can set him up with Goldstein. So we can't just walk in and talk to Goldstein. We definitely need that agent first. And more than likely, the agent's going to tell us to do a few things uh, that's going to require us to go to a few stores that we've seen. And every time I see Hangar 18, first thing I think of is Megadeth. So if you happen to be a fan of Megadeth, let me know in the comments. Now, for the people on the wall in the background, starting on the far left, I do not know who that is. Clearly, next one over is Michael Jackson, and the one to the far right is Cher, indicating that, you know, they got plastic work through this guy. I just don't know who the guy on the far left is next to Michael Jackson. So if you happen to know who that is, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you just happen to enjoy these videos, let me know in the comments below that you enjoy these uh, commentary videos. It's always good to know. Also kind of helps the YouTube traffic when it sees um, people commenting on it because then it understands that, hey, this is probably a popular video. Um, I only generally get like anywhere from like two to maybe 10 comments on some of the videos. So if we could generate more, that'd be great. And also don't forget to click that like and subscribe. I've already talked about it. Normally what I do for these games, uh, I started when I remember to do it. I have the thing on the far left hand side um, where the Sierra logo is and stuff like that that floats up that says like and subscribe. Usually what I try to do is when it pops up, it's, it's, I just throw them randomly onto the video. Like I don't place them at a specific time, I just kind of throw them down on top of the uh, reel. I usually try to think of something that is related to what's happening on the current screen as to a reason to like and subscribe so like if it were to come up uh, while it was in the in that uh, uh, makeup thing plastic surgery whatever you want to call it um, I would have said hey uh, you know have you ever done any plastic surgery if you have go ahead and click like and subscribe or something like that And this is what's one of those pains is I don't know where the last screen leads to the map so then I have to go all the way back in and see so 
So now this guy's attitude is very different. Now that we are famous. So we need a portfolio. Which actually walked the wrong way because it's the other way. That guy was supposed to move, but whatever. So now he's telling us that we need plastic surgery. So that's the next move. Now we have to go get plastic surgery. So he gives us a temporary nose to use so that we do not actually have to get plastic surgery since we can't afford it. This map system is infuriating though. So have you ever had to get a portfolio done? If you have, go ahead and click that like, subscribe, and tell me in the comments what it was like. I truly hate the mapping system in this thing. The way you just can't like walk off a screen or does it indicate when you walk off the screen when it's gonna to lead to a map? Now that we've had our surgery, this door is now open. Super not helpful. So by walking in this corner, Melodonna walks in, and so Les is able to spy on her. See immediately, she is pretty rude. So she talks about getting her revenge, and no one messes with her. Les thinks about how she's a spiteful little viper. There's a special party uh, that's going down. So we meet this guy who has these two uh, very stoic, attractive women with him. So he asks how we know uh, Mr. Bean, and he says, well, it all started back in the days before VGA. This is very reminiscent of uh, Space Quest Four. So we harken back to uh, Less Manly 1 
in search of the king. He goes on in detail how he knows Mr. Bean and how we met him at the uh, circus. sex twice. So now we're invited to the same party that uh, Maladonna is. So this looks like a pretty big party. Uh, let me know in the comments what was a big party that you went to. And then don't forget to click the like and subscribe. So here's less between Melodonna and Abe. And Goldstein is saying like she could be his backup singer. So Abe is going to, or uh, Les is going to try to purposely uh, rub some feathers and see if we can get someone to maybe slip. So we mentioned the perfume and she says everyone could, could have been wearing it, including LaFonda herself. We mentioned the limo to Abe. He says, hey, everyone's got a limo. It's Hollywood. Here and all had like contract disputes and he said that's no, Hollywood everyone is in constant contract disputes and then he goes on to say how she has a history of jealousy and that she was angry at LaFonda for not helping her basically uh, promote her video. So Les sees uh, Melodonna talking to Dina and Grina, who are the two women that were with Abe. And you can see how the women are positioned, they're very stoic, very zombie-like. And Les thinks, oh, these are the two that work with Melodonna. But there's a twist. They grab her and shove her into the car, the white limousine. eliminates Melodonna since she was just forced into the car. And look at that, the Hollywood Wax Museum. As I said, knew that was going to probably happen. This is, uh, it's in here where some of the puzzles get kind of weird. There's a scene where you have to do something and I was stuck for a long time. I think I even trimmed out some of it because I ended up being stuck there for probably like an hour. And so I think I trimmed some of my efforts of trying to figure out what to do next. So as we can see, there's a bunch of props in here. And so we're going to have to grab some of them, not all of them. I think this is also the first time that I die. Uh, in this game is shortly coming up. If 
you ever been to a wax museum yourself? Uh, let me know in the comments what it was like. Were you impressed by what was there? I've been to one. There's one uh, up in Hollywood. Uh, ironically, not this one that's in the game, but there is one in Hollywood. And so here's death number one, where Les ends up as a wax statue right next to Helmet. conversation again of them going back and forth. We're going to just speed through this because we've already seen this part. right inside the museum because that is the first time I died in this game and uh, it will not be the last time I think I die once or twice more so it's really really hard to see is if you look at their mouth you can see it is dripping something from the aliens mouth now why it would really be dripping like something like acidic, like the movie, no idea. stunt turned disastrous. Our hero was burned and horribly disfigured. The studio was badly underinsured, and they abandoned Abe. So Abe swore vengeance. So we find out, oh, and I did say there's a death. It's not, but I think there is one more coming. So he started a small talent agency, and he worked. Let me introduce some clarification. He's not Goldstein. He's Tony. Tony, the guy that we met right outside. He says, I'm getting to that. about how he grew more and more insane. It was grueling, maddening. So he financed his way through medical school and another mask. He's Dr. Nick. He says, yes, I am also Dr. Nick. He's the one who's connecting all these things together. But hold on. There's another mask. He has become Mad Wax instead of Mad Max.
so it looks like Mad Wax is about to turn Les into a statue. However, since Les left the statue next to Mr. Bean over here, or Helmet Bean I should say, uh, it actually begins to melt the wax off of Bean. And it weakens it enough for him to break free. Hopefully you've never been encased in wax. Uh, maybe you've gotten yourself waxed. If you have, feel free to tell me in the comments. I don't know where that one was going. And uh, don't forget to click like and subscribe. <laughs> that is an honest question, actually. Have you ever gotten yourself waxed? Whether it's, you know, like chests, private areas, face, whatever. Uh, one of the things that uh, I hate is shaving. I hate shaving. Uh, so that's why I have the beard that you see in all of the thumbnails I do in the commentary videos. Uh, there was consideration of getting waxed and I was like, nah, that's not for me. I don't think I can do it. So Helmet needs something to open that door. So we're able to use the torch to get the sword. Which seems weird, because how did Bean get up that high? If he can't open the door, how did he get that high to basically loosen the sword on a Conan figure? But hey, you know what? It's a game. Let's not, let's not dig too deep here. free LaFonda the same way we freed Bean. So after all that, we don't we're missing something. Keep touching we are able to collect wax. So we're going to save because we just collected wax, which is something different. So it's interesting that Les can also collect the wax, or uh, the sword. We'll zip through all of this again. So we hit the display with the sword and got some wax ourselves. So I think what should happen, I think, I'm trying to remember now, it's been a while because I've played uh, the other games in between, um, but I think Les can actually collect the wax and drop it, similar to what he can do with the sword. But 
but the clue was non-corrosive and literally just walked right by the alien thing. And spoiler alert, I still don't have what our buddy needs. two things that I think I still need to get. I moused over the uh, bat wings thinking that I could just use the bat wings to glide down and be like Batman. Avoid contact with skin or eyes. So let's use the, the wax. So have you ever messed with wax? Uh, if you have, let me know in the comments what you've done with wax. Like a lot of times people will melt wax and do cool things with it. For example, I have a old wine bottle in which I put a wax candle at the top and I lit it so that the when the wax runs it runs over the bottle and I as that wax candle would come to the end I just shove it into the bottle or take it out and then put another wax candle so it has all these colors of different um, wax running over the bottle it's very fragile because the wax obviously is fragile on it um, but it's actually pretty cool looking Alright, and so what we needed was the uh, the undershorts of uh, Tarzan, so that we could uh, use that to glide down. And now we notice it says, if only there were a way to glide down. So we make a makeshift parachute out of the loincloth. And parachute down. While the guy, we kind of flash back to a few seconds prior. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the acid to free less. And so less is able to leap to his feet along with a uh, bean. And he managed to grab bean and run up the stairs. So bean says that Les will be right behind him, but uh, Mad Wax says no, my zombie bimbos are going after him. And sure enough, there they are. Charisma. And randomly, Les pulls out a cross, which is nowhere in our inventory. And I like that he's pulling out garlic, like he's doing all the things, like a steak through the heart, stuff like that. I love that when he says steak, I don't have a steak, but apparently he has a cross and onions, or onions, I'm sorry, garlic with him. And I like that they call it like zombie repellents. Uh, all those things he just mentioned, the steak, the garlic, the religious symbol, those are all vampire, not zombie. So we show them, uh, it's supposed to be like a Kmart card, which turns them into a pile of wax. And coming up is the part that uh, I was stuck at for a while. Probably the part that I was stuck at the longest. I 
couldn't even figure out where I was, so I'm trying to climb upstairs. And you know, there is a, obviously the portal right in front of Madwax, because you can see that the floor goes the opposite way. But could not figure out what I'm supposed to do right here. Like I'm clicking on to try to walk upstairs and stuff like that. Oblivious to the portal literally in front of Madwax. Lots of frantic clicking, trying to pull the different ropes. And finally, the jig is up. So we can tell him to surrender unconditionally or to make a deal. He offers a counter deal of I'll put Pete down. Or I'll drop Pete is specifically what he says, if we agree to the bond me. And this is where he pulls out the gun. So when we go to click on the rope, Helmet will in turn bite his hand. The sudden sharp pain causes Mr. Max to scream in terror and he throws Mr. Bean. I keep saying Mr. Bean, but I should say Helmet Bean. Mr. Bean is a different actor. So now this is where it's unclear what to do. The guy's got a gun drawn on me. He's the embodiment of evil. Uh, Helmet seems to have disappeared. So have you ever been stuck in a game, uh, not sure what to do? Let me know what game has had you stuck uh, down in the comments, and don't forget to click like and subscribe. I like how it says using the axe against the Mad Max wouldn't accomplish anything. I feel like that would accomplish a lot. So at this point, I can't figure out what to click, what to do, so I'm, I'm just clicking through my inventory and clicking on him, trying to figure out what it is I should do here. So at that point, I think I have dead end. Like I'm missing something. So we're gonna go back and try to restore.
So you use, that's right, I forgot, you don't drop the wax. You use the earwax to plug your ears so that basically you give the signal for Helmet to ring the bell. And then when we go to get the gun, we find out it's movie propped. And so we see <laughs> Helmet riding on a bat that was sleeping in the uh, bell, descending down on Mad Wax. With the line from Yippie Kaye. You probably know the rest. gets behind him, which, you know, tiny little guy, I don't know how this would technically work, but <laughs> there you have it. Hasta la vista, baby. I mean, technically, mm, potentially committing an act of murder rather than, uh, you know, notifying local authorities <laughs> and uh, getting him arrested. But that's okay. It's a video game. So Les says, hey, shouldn't we go to free the girls? Yeah, we will. But there's no rush. They ain't going anywhere without us. We love LA. Now I'm assuming that the girls in wax can breathe. <laughs> Otherwise, there would technically be a rush to go down and uh, get them out of the wax. Overall, um, again, I do think that Less Manly 2 was a little bit better of a game. Um, not just because of the graphics of the uh, attractive ladies that are in it, but uh, I felt like the puzzles were more logical forward. Um, again, that last one at the very end was pretty difficult um, to figure out about the wax in the ear. Did not even think about that. I was thinking that the wax was something that I was supposed to drop and that um, helmet would pick up and use to hold the acid. So that one took me a while. I should have tried it. But, again, uh, that scene was definitely trimmed down because um, there was a whole, probably like, 45 minutes of me being stuck there and not being able to figure out what to do. And the answer was in my inventory. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the commentary. Hopefully you enjoy the channel. If you do, please click like and subscribe. And uh, if you... Um, have social media feel free to share the videos on other channels and other means and stuff like that <laughs> helps get the channel out there and more well known getting pretty close to a thousand uh, i think i have 900 subscribers so i'm almost there so any little push that you can do to help would be greatly appreciated all right thanks peace out and see you guys soon because i already beat another game called take you on dreams and i'll be doing commentary soon all right bye